Hello guys and welcome to Java Tutorial 3. In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you guys how to print out information on the screen using the print and print line methods. So let's go ahead and create a Java class. And we're going to save the class as ways to print information. And this is going to be stored inside of the Java folder on our desktop. Java. Make sure you have the Java extension added and then save the file. Next you want to do is you want to create the Java class. It's going to be public class and then ways to print information. Make sure that it's spelled the same as the file name. And then what we want to do is leave a traditional comment with some information for anybody that wants to take a look at our code. The first thing I want to do is keep track of the author. Hit tab here. All right, and this is going to be TKG Games. Next, we're going to keep the file name. All right, the uh, ways to print. And then we're going to keep a shot description. And this would be to use methods print text and arguments and spring line that takes either text and argument or optional. So it takes optional arguments or no arguments, okay? And this would be to output information to the screen. All right, so now that we have this, the first thing we want to do is before we talk about the main method, we need to talk about um, statement and we need to talk about the method. So, um, a statement is a complete logic ending in semicolon. All right, and then the method uses one or more statements to perform a task. All right, so now we can go ahead and create the min method. And this takes in a parameter of type string array. All right, so remember I told you guys that a string, right, is just a combination of characters. And it could be used to represent things like people's names, their address, their age, and so forth. So now what I want to do is want to go ahead and define our first statement. So remember the statement ends in semicolon, and this statement is going to use the system that out object to actually bring information to the screen. So we're going to use system dot out dot print. And this is gonna take an argument. I'm gonna use welcome to my channel. All right, and this is gonna be an argument of type string. All right. So what I want to do next is gonna save this file, and we want to run it. So in order for us to run this file, what we can do is pull up the command prompt by typing in cmd, and this is gonna bring up the command prompt. Right, and then we can type in cd desktop slash java slash, and this is going to take us into our Java folder, and we can see all the stuff in there. Or what we can do is go where we save the Java file and hold the shift key and right click 
and then you can pick any of the shells right here I'm gonna use the bash the kit bash here okay that, I like that one and I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger okay so this one is good because you can type in things like DR for Windows or you can type in LS and for Mac and Linux and it will still work okay so what I want to do is we want to actually go ahead and compile the ways to bring information so we're going to type in Java C type in W and hit the tap key and hit enter now this is going to go ahead and compile the Java file to, to produce the bytecode file which is the dot class file so we hit LS one more time or we hit the R you can see that the ways to print information that class is created and this has the bytecode information for the JVM to interpret and run the program next we want to type in Java to actually run the bytecode and then type in W and hit the tab key and hit enter now it's gonna say welcome to my channel so this is the text that has been printed out which is what we actually passed in to be printed out. This is the argument or information I wanted to be printed out. So now, what I want to do is want to go ahead and define another statement. So remember that a method can have one or more statements, right? So main here is a method that has one statement right now, so we can create another statement. So we can use the system dot out dot print again and put hope you enjoy my content all right so this is going to be another statement but now what we can truly see is how the print method actually works okay so let's go ahead and save this again and go back here so if you hit the up arrow key on your keyboard it will go ahead and pull up the previous information that you type in in the terminal finally reach where you say have the Java C and to compile the program and hit that and hit the up arrow keys again to run the application with the Java command and hit that so now you can see it says welcome to my channel hope you enjoy my content but this information is on the same line all right so print works by just printing out the bytes or the information through as it's going it doesn't add a cursor it doesn't push the cursor or the line feed to the next line all right so what do I mean by line feed so typically when you're typing a program if you're in Microsoft Office or you're in a text editor right and you hit the enter button that be, that pushes the cursor to the next line right so what print does is it doesn't have the ability to add a cursor to the next line by itself so you have to actually specify it and one way that we can specify print to actually add a cursor to the next line is by produce is by adding what we call an escape sequence or an escape character and escape characters typically start with backslash and some character it could be T for tab or N for a new line okay so what the slash N stands here for its new line so this is gonna go ahead and manually push the cursor for us so let's save this go back here and just type in uh, Java C and then we can hit the W key and hit the tab one more time and add the Java the reason why it's confused now is because we actually had something in there two files in there with two different extensions so it doesn't know which one to run and we're gonna go ahead and run that and type in Java one more time and W hit tab and run this so now you can see that welcome to my channel and hope you enjoy my content actually are on two separate lines than it was before because we added the escape sequence so instead of adding the escape sequence here let's take it off and do something else so instead of us adding the escape sequence to do the job what we can do is we can use the system.out.printLine method and what this empty print line method does is it has the ability to add a cursor to the next line on its own so let's go ahead and do that so what we're going to do is going to do system dot out dot print line and we're not going to pass in any information to print out okay we're going to save this again and go here and hit the up arrow key to, to compile the program all right so it's going to be java c in the way to print the java to compile that 
and then we're going to heat the arrow keys up again and we're going to print that. So you can see that by adding just the system.out.print line here, it acts the same as us adding the escape sequence to manually do the job. Okay. So what is the difference between print and print line? The difference is that when print is done, it doesn't push the cursor to the next line. And when print line is done, it actually pushes the cursor to the next line. That's why it's called print line. All right. So print and then new line. So as a new line, so line feed. Okay. So let's go ahead and actually create a statement here. Is another system dot out the print line object. All right, and I'll put my name is James Bond. All right, so I hope you guys can tell me what the output is. So just by looking at it, I can tell that this is going to be on its own line and this and this are going to be on the same line. The reason is because even though this pushes the cursor to the next line, what follows is that when the cursor goes to the next line, the information that's going to be printed after this is going to be this one. However, when this is done printing, no line is, no, it's not pushed to the next line. So this is going to print right after it. So content and mine and mine is going to be squished together. All right. So let's go ahead and save this so we can see what the output is. Pull this up and we're going to recompile the file. So every time you change something, you have to recompile the file and then we're going to run that again. So you can see that the first one is printed out and then we have hope you enjoy my content and then mine is squished together. Name is James Bond. All right. So Remember that to fix this, what we can do is either have a system that out the print line right after this, or we can go ahead and add an escape sequence. So if we add an escape sequence, all right, then we can go ahead and um, see that the information gets pushed to the next line. So now you can see that all of the information appears on their own line. All right, so before we go, I'm just gonna go ahead and introduce the printf method here. All right. So I'm just gonna add, so additional method printf. And printf stands for print format. And what this takes is a formatted string. And then the argument or arguments, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and show, let me show you an example. So this is what I typically use throughout my programs and this is what we're gonna be sticking with almost all throughout the tutorials unless I don't have to use it. So what we need to do is pass in the formatted information, all right? So what we're taking, we're taking a string, so it's gonna be percent %s and this is called a format specifier. So this is gonna be called a, just like an escape character this is going to be a format specifier. So it's going to take in a string. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and print out a new line. So the new line in Java, instead of using the, we're using the printf method, instead of using slash n here, it's percent n, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and close that. Now we want to go, we need to pass in the information here. So for the percent n, it's just an escape sequence. So we don't have to pass in anything. This is going to go ahead and just add the, the new line feed for you. But for the s, we need to pass information. So what we need to do here is pass in end of the tutorial. All right. And then we can go ahead and close that. So what we've done here is we have passed in this right here, which is the format of string. This is the format that we wanted to follow, right? And then we have a new line character here. So here, what this is going to do is if I went ahead and just use another system dot out dot print and I put some dash dashes so we can pass in any type of information that we want here and close that. You will see that this part right here, since we're putting the percent n, it's going to go ahead and push the cursor to the next line anyway, and then we're going to print out this information. So it looks like even though we're using print here, it's going to look like we have actually added a percent n um, to print out of this, which we did actually. 
So let's go ahead and compile this. Okay, so we're gonna hit the up arrow key, compile, and then we're gonna hit the up arrow keys again and run this. So you can see that we have end of the tutorial and then the dash dash. The reason is because end of the tutorial is the string specifier here, which is the percent n uh, s, and percent n is the new line. So the new line is gonna print out the information and then push everything to the next line, and then we bring this. All right. So this is how we get this part of the information done. All right, guys. This is it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Bye bye.